So, let's talk about Instagram. Hey guys, it's Pao. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Yesterday, I asked you guys on my Instagram stories regarding which video you guys want to see. And most of you voted for how I edit my Instagram photos and IG feed tips. So basically, for this video, I'll be talking about how I edit my Instagram photos and also how I maintain and create my Instagram feed. So if you guys want to see all that, then just keep on watching. So of course, before we dive right into the video, I'm going to introduce or plug in my Instagram account, which is Pauline Julian with double E. So if you guys want to follow me, then you go do it. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is equipment. So that's basically one of the most important things if you are very serious on maintaining an aesthetic Instagram feed. But of course, those equipment do not need to be expensive. So if you guys scroll down through my Instagram feed, for the bottom half, the pictures were taken using my iPhone 7. But last January, I upgraded into my iPhone 11. And I've also been able to buy my vlogging camera recently. And it's the Canon EOS M100. The next thing that we're going to talk about are apps. The first thing that you need to know about me is that I'm the type of person who doesn't like having lots of apps downloaded on her phone because as much as possible, I want to save up on my iPhone storage. With regards to photo editing, I only use two photo editing apps and that is Visco or VSCO. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce it. The second one is PixArt which I use mainly for doing a photo collage for editing my thumbnails and also for editing out some features or unwanted parts on my photos. Now the most challenging thing when it comes to your Instagram account is choosing your Instagram feed. Why? Because it's something that you need to commit to. You have to be 100% dedicated to it, especially if you are a content creator. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to pick a theme and you have to be committed to it. Of course, it can also evolve, especially if you want to be versatile. But my main thing for you guys is you have to pick a theme that really resonates with you. You have to pick one that represents you and your personality. Because usually when we hear the word aesthetic with regards to Instagram feeds, the words that usually come into our minds are the words neutral, minimalist, or tones but for me I find that having that kind of feed is quite restricting and it's also very hard to maintain because I believe that the world is a colorful place like for example if I go out I don't want to be restricted with wearing clothes that are white gray or exhibiting earth tones and once I'm out and I want to have my picture taken I don't want to trouble myself with needing to find a white wall or a neutral colored environment I'm going to have my picture taken right there and then so that is basically my philosophy and also the major reason why I decided to stick with a colorful theme with regards to my Instagram feed and because I chose to incorporate a colorful theme the major challenge that I have to deal with is transition you have to be mindful of the sequence or the chronological arrangement of the photos as you upload them on your Instagram the colors must complement each other so that overall your feed would achieve an eye-pleasing balance. You don't want the colors to be too random in a way that it's really off-putting. So to illustrate clearly, I would be heading on to my Instagram feed so you guys know what I'm talking about. So with this photo, you'd notice that the background also has a dominant beige tone. So of course, the next photo that I uploaded also has a beige dominant tone and I follow this photo with this video and if you guys can see at the edge of this video it also has a beige wall so that corresponds with the beige dominant tone going on at this particular section of my feed another specific example is the transition from this one to this one to this one okay so this one has a dominant beige tone that corresponds with the previous photos that I uploaded so the next photo that I uploaded is a collage and you'd notice that the wall has a dominant gray tone but this one still matches this picture because the beige tone of this picture matches of course with my skin tone so parang yung skin ko yung naga act as the beige color that is why medyo matchy matchy pa rin sila you can see that the background has a light gray tone so the next picture that I uploaded also has a gray tone it doesn't have to be the dominant tone of the picture as long as my gray part or like any color that corresponds with the previous photos that you've uploaded then that would be totally fine and for this section naman they really match well with one another because all of the pictures have the dominant colors of blue, white, and gray. Another dilemma that you guys might face, what if you want to upload pictures, but the problem is in all of those pictures, you're wearing the same outfit and or those pictures were taken in the same location. So what you have to do to remedy that problem starts pa lang when you shoot those pictures. So as much as possible, I would advise you guys to strive to at least have these three types of shots. Number one would be the whole or full body shot number two half body shot and number three a close-up or a selfie shot or it can also be an outfit shot another option is to try out different body positions or poses 
all to be able to achieve an eye-pleasing balance. To cite some specific examples, I'm going to show you guys some specific rows in my Instagram feed. So applying the principle of the different types of shots, body positions, or poses that I mentioned earlier, you can see that the first photo I uploaded is what I would consider as a half body shot. It can also be considered as a close-up shot compared to the second picture of the row that I uploaded which is a far and wide shot and lastly I uploaded same lang with the first picture but it creates a balance because this one is a whole body shot so as you can see variation creates balance the next example would be this row so the first photo is a selfie followed by a half body shot and the last one is a picture of me sitting down on a swing set so the next thing that I would introduce is what I would call as the IG feed savers. So these things come in handy especially if you experience a mental block with your IG feed like if you don't know what to do, what photo to upload next, if you don't know how to transition from this photo to a photo in the future that you want to upload. Here are some three solutions that I can give you guys. The first one is with the use of a photo collage and it's also going to be helpful if the dominant tones of those collage matches the previous photo that you uploaded and the next photo that you want to upload. So as you guys can see, this is a photo photo collage of me say so I was stuck with this photo and I wanted to upload this photo my skin tone matches the beige tone of this picture and the light gray wall matches with the gray tone of this picture now the second solution is the use of black and white pictures and you may think that oh I'm maintaining a colorful feed why would I upload a black and white picture but well, I also don't know why but I've just noticed that black and white pictures can really save your feet especially if you're stuck and the last one is the use of filler photos so basically you guys usually download it from Pinterest or Tumblr but I would highly suggest to create your own filler photos such as taking pictures of mundane things like your bag your shoes your outfit as long as that filler photo would act as a good bridge or compromise between the previous photo that you've uploaded and the next photo that you want to upload and finally for the last part which is how I edit my Instagram photos as much as possible I strive to have natural looking photos that's why I try to incorporate zero to minimal edits when it comes to my photos first I'll show you guys how I use Visco for minimally editing my photos so first we'll launch the Visco app and I have here this picture the first thing that I would manipulate is exposure and a lot of people think that when they increase the exposure it would make the colors more vibrant it would make the colors more must magpa pop in colors and that is a common misconception again it depends on the photos but for pictures taken with good or decent lighting if you increase the exposure it would affect the colors negatively so in this magiging vibrant contrary to popular belief the first thing that i would manipulate is the exposure so i am going to decrease it by 0.7 and then i'm going to increase the contrast to 0.5 highlights i'm going to increase it by 2.8 and then for white balance, I'm going to increase the temperature to 0 0.4. And there you have it. As you can see, very minimal lang. But ayun nga, from this one to this one. The next thing that I'll be teaching you guys is what I would call as a temperature hack. So this solution comes in handy, especially for good photos with bad lighting. Beside a specific example, I have this photo right here. Everything about this photo is perfect. The problem, however, is lighting. It doesn't look good. It's really off-putting. I've discovered what I now call as a temperature hack. For Visco, temperature is under white balance, so we're going to select it. And as you can see, there's a temperature right here. Now, this is where the magic happens. As soon as you increase the temperature, as you guys can see, all the colors just pop right back in. They become very vibrant, but then you just play around with other elements like the exposure, which we're going to increase to 0.5. And then for contrast, 0.5 as well. And also for the highlights to 1.0 and there you have it from this really really bad bluish tone color to this one here is another example of a photo of me in hong kong so first we'll go to white balance increase the temperature and then manipulate the other elements and now i have the photo from this one to this one the third common edit that i apply to my photos is the act of cropping you have to determine the parts that should be left out and the parts that should be included so for this picture as you guys can see kita yung gilid and we don't want that because it's kind of off-putting so what we're going to do is we're going to crop it so all you have to do is to 
click on the adjust icon and since we're going to upload this on Instagram you have to select your desired ratio so I'm going to select the ratio 4 is to 5 I'm also going to omit to take a water break thing because it doesn't look good and now here you go from this to this and last but not the least is the clone tool which I'm going to use in PixArt. The clone tool works really well if you want to get rid of blemishes or you want to remove certain items in your pictures. And an example will be this photo. So if you guys zoom in, kitang kita yung bulkiness ng mga pimples ko. So all you have to do is click on the tools and then you have the clone. And then basically you're going to zoom in on the photo. And then you have to tap on the perfect or the good area which you want to clone or you know make patong dun sa blemish. Now before you tap over your blemishes, make sure to select the water brush icon right here. And then you have to decrease the opacity and then the hardness. If you don't do that, super mahalata yung parang patong or edit. And we have to make this as subtle as possible. So once you've decreased the opacity or the hardness, then you can just tap tap. So basically, you tap tap lang kayo until you're satisfied. You can definitely use the clone tool to clean up backgrounds. And for removing unwanted objects in your photos, the clone tool would absolutely be a good choice for you guys to use. And one last quick additional tip for you guys because that Instagram usually decreases the quality of your photos when you upload it on that platform. So basically, when you launch your Instagram, especially if you're going to upload multiple photos in one post, all you have to do is once you've selected pictures, you click on the photo, Press edit, use the sharpen tool, and increase the sharpness kahit mga by 20 lang. And you do this for every photo, that way the good quality of your photos will still be maintained. And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and to follow me on my socials to stay updated. Thank you and see you guys again on my next video.